This video is going to show how to um, use Excel Solver to solve a linear programming uh, problem. So in the lecture we talked about the golf bag example. Recall that um, we make two types of golf bags. We either make a standard bag or we make a deluxe bag. And in producing these bags, um, th there, there are really four operations that must be performed. So we have to cut and dye the material. Uh, we have to sew it together. We have to do some finishing. And then there's inspection and packaging. Now, we were told that um, if we're going to produce a standard bag, it's going to require 0.7 hours of the cutting, uh, half an hour of sewing, one hour of finishing, and uh, a tenth of an hour of um, uh, of uh, inspection, and we generate ten dollars profit per bag. We, we were also given some parameters for the deluxe bag, and then let's see. Let's go over to the next page. Um, we also have some constraints. So, so we don't have unlimited resources. We have six hundred and thirty total hours of cutting time. So, between the machine and the qualified operators, that's all we can do. Um, 600 hours of sewing and so forth. And so, so the question we're, we're, we're trying to answer is how should we uh, allocate these scarce resources, so the cutting, sewing, finishing, and inspection, uh, so as to maximize our profit? Now, we're going to assume that there is infinite demand. So what that means is uh, you know, any, um, any bag that I produce can get sold immediately. All right, so, so how do we do this? Well, uh, we're going to go over to Excel. I've already typed in some of these numbers. So just to kind of uh, re review, um, we make $10 a profit per standard bag, only 9 on the deluxe bag. So I've entered in a row here, which is the profit per, ba per bag, and we're going to have $10 um, you know, dollars per bag for deluxe, nine, 10 for standard, 9 for deluxe. Uh, likewise, I've entered in all of the amount per bag that uh, each of these tasks require. So 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 1, and 0.1. You'll see those entered here. Uh, likewise, the values for the uh, deluxe bag are entered here. Now, um, let's start by thinking about our decision variables. So the decision variables, if we wanted to write them, you know, let x1 equal the number of standard bags produced and then x2 will equal the number of deluxe bags. Now, we need a place to put these. I put them, I, I want to put them up here. And so I should probably give it some value. Let's just say I make zero of each. Now, ultimately I need to get to profit. So then the question is, uh, what is my profit? If I make um, you know x1 and x2 bags, so this cell stores x1, this cell stores x2. Well, one way to do this, the obvious way, is is to take the number of standard bags that you produce and multiply that by the profit that you that you um, obtain for a standard bag, and then we're going to add to that the number of deluxe bags times the profit per bag. So that's going to be profit. Now, this formula is actually not the most uh, you know, efficient way to specify this from a, compu well, from a, from a typing point of view. Um, there's actually a special function in, um, in Excel called sum product. So if you say sum product and you just give it this array, so we want to take this, comma, this. Uh, we will get the exact same thing. Now, let's just make sure we know what we're doing on this. So if I, for example, made one standard bag, my profit should be 10. And so sure enough, uh, it's 10. Let's say in addition to the one standard bag, I decide to make two deluxe bags. So the two deluxe bags are going to generate two times nine or $18 profit, plus the 10 should give me 28. All right, so good. Uh, it looks like I'm, I'm doing this right. Uh, that's something you always want to do is just check this. Uh, I, I always, uh, you know, or 
I, I'll often make a mistake, so that's a good way to check it. All right, now we also need to know the total number of hours used. So we're going to do roughly the same thing. I'm going to say sum product. I've got to spell it right though. And my first array, I'm going to specify as B$3 through C$3. Had I been clever, uh, I would have put the dollar signs up there and I could have just copied this down, but it's not going to hurt us to copy it. Now we want to multiply that by B7 colon C7. So let's just um, think about what the answer should be. So I'm going to make two deluxe bags, which will take one hour each, so two hours, plus one times 0.7 should be 2.7 if I've set this up correctly. So sure enough, we have 2.7. Now because I put those dollar signs in, it's going to hold those cell references constant, and I can just copy this down. So I always double click on that little corner thing, and maybe we should do one more just to make sure that we, we've got it. Okay, so let's look at inspection. 1 times 0.1 is 0.1. 2 times 0.25 is a half, so a half plus 0.1 should be 0.6. It looks like um, we're okay. Now, the one thing I neglected to do is to enter in the available hours. So let's go get those available hours. So 630, 600. So we have 630 of these. We have 600 of these. 708, 135. So 708, 135. We've now um, got the spreadsheet all set up and ready to go. We just need to use Solver. So we're going to go up to uh, was it Tools and then Solver. I'll bring this down. Now, the absolute first thing we need to do is to set our objective function. So our objective function is in D4. So remember, D4 is the uh, total profit that we make. And we also have to tell Excel whether we want to maximize or minimize it. The default is to maximize, and that's exactly what we want. Now, we're going to maximize this profit by changing certain cells. Which, which cells do we change? Well, those are the decision variables. The decision variables were up in B3 through C3. So these two cells here, B3 and C3. If you don't want to type, you can... Um, Go copy those in. I'll, I'll show you how you can do that. You can go like this, and it, it copies it in for you. So B3 through C3. Now we've got some constraints. So remember, the, the constraints here are in the number of hours that we have available. So I'm going to add a constraint at this point, and the Add Constraint window uh, flew to my other screen. So one set of constraints, you always enter these in in blocks is um, the total hours that I use must be, okay, less than or equal to is the default, and that's exactly what we want, must be less than or equal to the, the available hours that we have. So that's going to be all of those. Now, oops, I think I did something wrong there. Let's, let's redo this. I'm kind of worried that I... So uh, remember, this... Now you got to click on constraint and you, you, you highlight all this. All right, so now if you hit OK, what you'll see is that we've added a constraint. Now we can add as many as we want. If we want to edit it, we can do that as well. If we added some stuff we don't want, we can delete it. Um, I want to point out another thing. So this box by default is checked. So leave it checked. Uh, this is make uh, unconstrained variables non-negative. All right, so what that means is that these decision variables, so the number of deluxe bags and the number of standard bags, must be non-negative. In other words, we can't make negative bags. Um, the fewest we could possibly make is zero. So when we specified our constraints earlier on, in the Excel, we always said, you know, our decision variables had to be non-negative. Well, that's how we enforce that. One more thing. If we go down to the uh, solving method, this is a, um, a, a linear programming problem. And the default optimization method is a non-linear optimization method. 
that nonlinear optimization method is kind of overkill. Um, I gotta get this thing down. I just changed it to simplex um, on my other screen. So the simplex algorithm can be used for solving this since it's not a nonlinear problem, it's a linear problem. One other thing, go into options and you can see what, um, what we have available here. Um, we don't need to change any options uh, for this problem. It keeps coming down. All right. So once you've done that, so, so in summary, you have to set the objective function. You have to set your um, decision variables, set the constraints, make sure that they're non-negative. And then you want to use the simplex method whenever you have a linear programming problem. Go ahead, solve. And that's all you have to do. Now you'll see that uh, Excel has, has a tried a bunch of combinations. Um, we also want to get some sensitivity plots. So keep the original solution, give us some sensitivity plots, and go hit OK. And you'll see that there's now a another tab with some sensitivity reports that we're going to go over later. All right. Now, um, what the solution says is that we ought to be making 540 standard bags and 252 deluxe bags, and our total profit is going to be, I'm just going to write this down, 7668 per second. Notice that we are under our constraints. So we had 630 hours of cutting, we used every last hour. Um, likewise, well, sewing is not a binding constraint. We, we didn't use all of that, but we did use all of our finishing time, we didn't use all of our inspection time. All right, now, I think it's worthwhile just kind of playing with this. So is this really the optimal solution? So for example, uh, if I made fewer standard bags, and so if I, if I made, say, one additional deluxe bag, and, and uh, I'd have to reduce this because I'm going to, I have to stay within the constraints. So let's do 538, and we'll make this 253. And so what you'll notice that we're still within our constraints, um, barely. However, uh, we don't make as much money. So instead of making 7668, we make 7657. All right, let's go, um, let's go try to make an additional one of these um, standard bags. Actually, let's make two fewer deluxe bags, so 250. And then we can make a couple extra, so 541. You'll notice we still don't make as much. We're barely under the constraints. So that's why I had to make two fewer deluxe. Um, so my, my point here is that uh, I think we really have found the optimal solution. There, there is no way that I can uh, make more profit uh, than 7668. So that's our solution.